Hello, my name is Wu Pons. Today we'll be discussing CRPD Article 11 and Disability Inclusive Humanitarian Action. This module is brought to you today by the U.S. International Council on Disabilities through the generous funding of Rehabilitation International. Key Content and Learning Objectives this module discusses disability inclusive humanitarian action and emergency responses within the specific context of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, CRPD. It aims to understand the broad context for disability and humanitarian action. To understand how the CRPD is impacting humanitarian and emergency responses to examine the legal basis under the CRPD for disability inclusive humanitarian action, to identify examples of disability inclusive humanitarian action and emergency responses. What is the broad context for disability inclusive humanitarian action and emergency responses? Humanitarian emergencies and disability. Humanitarian emergencies include natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, etc., and war. Persons with disabilities are more at risk of harm and death during humanitarian emergencies than the rest of the population. Article 11 of the CRPD requires states to protect persons with disabilities during humanitarian emergencies. There is a graphic on the right side of the slide entitled Disability, Conflict, and Disaster. The text reads, there are 65.3 million forcibly displaced people in the world today and 7 to 10% are persons with disabilities. 75% of persons with disabilities in crisis situations report inadequate access to water, shelter, or food. 50% of people with disabilities in crisis situations do not have access to the mobility aids they need. People with disabilities are two to four times more likely to die in a crisis situation than the rest of the population. Article 11 of the CRPD requires states to protect persons with disabilities in conflicts and disasters. Sustainable Development Goal 10 Dot two, empowering and promoting the social, economic, and political inclusion of all, irrespective of disability. This graphic is from February 2017. Why are persons with disabilities at more risk during war and humanitarian emergencies? Social, environmental, and attitudinal barriers, discrimination, abandonment, inaccessible services and humanitarian aid, and exclusion from emergency planning. On the right part of this slide, there's a photo of a man with two canes. The caption under the photo reads, Mascoud lost his leg in a landmine accident while taking a walk in his village in Afghanistan. What is the legal basis under the CRPD for disability inclusive humanitarian action? Article 11 of the UN CRPD. Article 11, situations of risk and humanitarian emergencies. States parties shall take in accordance with their obligations under international law, including international humanitarian law, and international human rights law, all necessary measures to ensure the protection and safety of persons with disabilities in situations of risk, including situations of armed conflict, humanitarian emergencies, and the occurrence of natural disasters. Video viewing. What is the UN CRPD? Key point, Article 11, of the UN CRPD requires countries to protect persons with disabilities in situations of risk. How to comply with Article 11 of the UN CRPD in humanitarian emergencies. 
reform policies and practices in the context of situations of risk and humanitarian emergencies under the CRPD. Ensure effective management and dissemination of accessible information at all stages of emergencies. Ensure active coordination, participation, and meaningful, meaningful consultation with persons with disabilities and their representative organizations, including women, boys, and girls with disabilities at all levels. Mobilize adequate, timely, and predictable resources to operationalize their commitment for emergency preparedness and response that is inclusive of and accessible to persons with disabilities following a human rights based approach in their programming efforts in order to avoid excluding members of this group. Build capacity across stakeholders, including both military and civilian, peacekeeping personnel, and other field workers intervening in emergency situations regarding the rights of persons with disabilities. Implement international cooperation in line with standards established by the CRPD. Avoid including their disability-related strategy matters for prevention and pri primary impairments. Promote the inclusion of persons with disabilities in existing frameworks dealing with conflict and emergency situations. Adopt internationally agreed guidelines on humanitarian response for upholding the rights of persons with disabilities. Article 32 of the CRPD. Article 32, International Cooperation. States parties recognize the importance of international cooperation and its promotion in support of national efforts for the realization of the purpose and objectives of the present convention and will undertake appropriate and effective measures in this regard between and among states and as appropriate in partnership with relevant international and regional organizations and civil society, in particular organizations of persons with disabilities. Such measures could include a ensuring that international cooperation, including international development programs, is inclusive of and accessible to persons with disabilities. B facilitating and supporting capacity building, including through the exchange and sharing of information, experiences, training programs, and best practices. C, facilitating cooperation in research and access to scientific and technical knowledge. And D, providing as appropriate technical and economic assistance, including by facilitating access to and sharing of accessible and assistive technologies and through the transfer of technologies. UN Security Council Resolution 2475, 2019. There's an image on this slide which reads International Disability Alliance, UN Security Council adopts resolution S slash RES slash 2475 on persons with disabilities. 20 June 2019, hashtag UNSCR2475. The image is of the UN Security Council. What is the impact of Article 11 of the CRPD? on humanitarian and emergency responses. CRPD Committee Statements on Article 11. In concluding observations, the CRPD Committee has recommended to states, in accordance with the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015 to 2030, to take the following actions to comply with the obligations of Article 11. Adopt and develop comprehensive strategies and protocols for general emergency risk situations. 
ensure effective involvement of organizations of persons with disabilities in disaster risk reduction strategies and national disaster management plans to ensure accessibility and inclusion. Use a human rights based response for internationally displaced persons with disabilities, especially those displaced for prolonged periods of time in situations of risk, including violence during armed conflict and natural disasters. Develop early warning systems in situations of risk that are accessible for all persons with disabilities. Conduct vulnerability assessments of persons with disabilities, specifically children with disabilities who are asylum seekers and persons in refugee-like situations to ensure they have access to social, protection, assistance technologies, information, and, and adequate services, e.g. shelter, medical care, sanitation, etc. UN Sustainable Development Goals. There's an image on this page of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. The image reads, one, no poverty, two, zero hunger, three, good health and well-being, four, quality education, five, gender equality, six, clean water and sanitation, seven, affordable and clean energy, eight, decent work and economic growth, nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, 10, reduced inequalities, 11, sustainable cities and communities, 12, responsible consumption and production, 13, climate action, 14, life below water, 15, life on land, 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, 17, partnerships for the goals. There are three links on the right side of this slide. They read SDG 10, reduced inequality, SDG 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, SDG 16, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions. This slide has three columns. The first column reads IASC Guidelines. Below the title is an image of the cover page of the IASC Guidelines on Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities in Humanitarian Action. In the middle column, titled Sendai Framework. Below that title, there's an image of the cover of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015 to 2030. In the far right column, titled Humanitarian Disability Charter. Below that title is an image of the charter that reads Charter on Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities in Humanitarian Action, Key Principles to Make Humanitarian Action Inclusive for Persons with Disabilities, View the Charter, Endorse the Charter. CRPD Committee Reporting. States, Parties, Reports. The CRPD requires states parties to submit a report to the CRPD committee two years after ratification of the treaty. States parties are also required every subsequent four years to submit a report to the CRPD committee. Civil society. Civil society, specifically organizations of persons with disabilities are encouraged to submit alternative reports, quote, shadow reports, end quote, to the CRPD committee. National Human, Human Rights Institutions or the Office of the Disability Ombuds, Ombudsman are also encouraged to submit alternative reports. What are some examples of disability inclusive humanitarian action? Inclusion in disaster risk reduction and preparedness. 
Lessons learned. Persons with disabilities and organizations of persons with disabilities, OPDs, can have a crucial role to play in disaster risk reduction and preparedness. Partnerships between humanitarian actors and OPDs are crucial to build OPDs capacity to act as first responders. A person-centered and community approach to allow for engagement between OPDs and the community and the government to participate in decision making is essential. Humanitarian actors need to take deliberate action to prepare themselves to address the particular challenges faced by persons with disabilities in crisis. Accessibility and reasonable accommodation is a requirement for the meaningful participation and access to services. The disability community is diverse and different disability groups need to be considered and represented. Bangladesh, providing technical support to address barriers for persons with disabilities. Practice, a mobile application was used to provide simple one-page guidance on all issues relevant to the design and implementation of inclusive humanitarian action. Challenge. The application was not translated into the local language, making it hard to share inclusive designs with local staff, and the lack of images and drawing to clarify concepts to overcome the language barrier. Solution. Technical resources like the mobile application should be translated into the local language, include images, and be combined with basic training on inclusion of persons with disabilities as well as follow-up support for the users of the resource. On this slide in the right-hand corner, middle of the slide, there is an image of a child uh, traversing water using crutches along with the picture of a mobile app. New Zealand, persons with intellectual disabilities lead preparedness program. Practice. After a 2011 earthquake in New Zealand, workshops on disaster preparedness were co-developed and co-delivered across New Zealand to persons with intellectual disabilities and their supporters. Challenge. These workshops soon after a disaster can trigger re-experiencing of trauma requiring professional and personal support to address ongoing emotional challenges. Key lesson, a genuine co-design approach allows persons with disabilities to be active agents in disaster preparedness, provides a safe space, and ensures accessible communications. This slide includes an image on the right-hand side of the slide of the country of New Zealand showing active faults active volcano and volcano centers, as well as tsunami wave heights. The caption of the photo reads, figure one, the New Zealand setting drawn by GNS Science. Note, all of New Zealand's coastline is subject to some form of tsunami risk and potential for coastline erosion. Likewise, extreme weather events and the landsliding can impact many places nationally and flooding can affect catchments all across the country. Kenya, disability inclusion committees conduct assessment in refugee camps. Practice, since 2014, persons with disabilities have participated in assessment of barriers and enablers to access essential services in two refugee camps in Kenya. The findings are presented to the agencies responsible for those services. Challenge, negative attitudes and stereotypes of persons with disabilities meant that they were excluded from certain humanitarian aid distribution points and not considered by refugee camp administrators in activities. Key lesson, building capacity of persons with disabilities to represent themselves in decision-making structures will allow them to participate in training, 
monitoring, and coordination meetings to increase the impact of advocacy for inclusion and accessibility. This slide on the right hand side includes a photograph of a refugee camp which shows many, many lines of tents. Summary. Persons with disabilities are more at risk of harm and death during humanitarian emergencies than the rest of the population because of social, environmental, and attitudinal barriers, discrimination, abandonment, inaccessible services and humanitarian aid, and exclusion from emergency planning. Article 11 of the CRPD requires states to protect persons with disabilities during humanitarian emergencies. Persons with disabilities and OPDs can have a critical role to play in disaster risk reduction and preparedness. Additional resources. Case study collection 2019. Inclusion of persons with disabilities in humanitarian action 2019. Interagency Standing Committee, IASC Guidelines, Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities in Humanitarian Action, 2019. UN Office of Disaster Risk Reduction, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, 2015 to 2030, 2015. Interagency Standing Committee, IASC Guidelines, for Mental Health and Psychosocial Support in Emergency Settings, 2007. World Humanitarian Summit, Charter on Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities in Humanitarian Action, 2016.